after Ya'juj and Ma'juj, there shall be a period of luxury and peace, the likes of which this world has never seen since the beginning of time. The amount of peace and luxury that will take place, our Prophet mentioned that one Romana, one grapefruit or one pomegranate will suffice an entire tribe. And one shank of lamb will be eaten by an entire subdivision of a city. In other words, the earth will give like never before. And in one version, it says that the uh, snakes will play with the, 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 the toddlers and the lions and, the, and the, the wolves. The, the wolves will play with the lambs, for example. These phrases are found. What we see in this is that after all of that fighting, years and years of the Jal and Ya'juj and Ma'juj and whatnot, and we don't want to be alive when that happens. Those that live through, Allah will give them some peace. And this is the Sunnah Allah fi khalqihi. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Fa inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. This is the Sunnah of Allah. Those people that saw the worst of the worst, and we do not want to be amongst them, we should seek refuge in Allah from living to see the Dajjal. Na'udhu billahi min fitnat al Dajjal. We don't want to be around when the Dajjal comes. We don't want to be here. But if those people that are here are here, and they manage to eke through those years of turmoil and trial, that generation, then they shall be blessed like no other generation has been blessed since the beginning of time. How long will this time frame be? Some a hadith mentions seven years. And are these these seven years or another? Allah knows best. But there will be a few years. And this is proven. By our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Wallahi, he gave a qasam to Allah. You shall perform Hajj and Umrah to the Kaaba even after Ya'juj and Ma'juj. That's these years now. Now the fact that you're performing Hajj and is performing means there's more than one Hajj. For a few years, there shall be peace in this world. No fighting. No two people will fight one another. Can you believe? That has never happened since Habil and Qabil. <laughs> has never happened. But Allah will bless those people when they have seen how evil war is. For those years, no two people will ever have an argument. Khalas. Utter peace on this earth. Now, unfortunately, what we learn with that peace and stability some people's hearts or maybe the next generation that is born or whatnot, their hearts will become hard and lack iman. And we'll explain why in a while. But these years will be the best years of all of mankind, but we don't want to live to see them because we have to go through something to see them. And eventually, something will happen. Isa will either die or, 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 or whatnot or Mahdi will die. We don't know when, by the way. And by the way, there are legends found that Isa, uh, we can say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Isa, we can say rahimahullah ta'ala, all of this is allowed for Isa and for any righteous person by the way. Uh, Isa, rahimahullah ta'ala, and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no problem, shall, according to some reports, die a natural death and be buried in the hijr of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. Where do we get this from? By the way, this is not an authentic hadith but there are such a hadith of them is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As which is not authentic I'm going to come to that that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said yanzilu Isa ibn Maryam ila al-ard Isa will come down to this earth fayatazawwaj he will get married wa yuladu lahu and children will be born to him wa yamkhuthu khamsan wa arba'ina sana and he will live for 45 years he was taken up at the age of 33. So he will live till he's 45. So another 13 years or so. And this would make sense with all that we have said. Then he shall die and he shall be buried with me in my qabr. Then I and Isa ibn Maryam will stand up together and between us will be between Abu Bakr and Umar. Now, this hadith is reported in a number of very, very obscure books that none of you would have heard of. Uh, Ibn Abid Dunya uh, mentions it, and Ibn al Jawzi in his Al Ilal al Mutanahiyah, and Al Muntadham, and Al Wafa, and all of them say that this hadith is 
very weak. It is very weak. Some of them say it is even munkar. Uh, so it's not an authentic because there's a very well-known person in there by the name of Abdurrahman uh, al-Afriqi who was known to be a very weak narrator. Uh, so the hadith is not authentic. There is a narration in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, but it's not a hadith. Abdullah ibn Salam. Who is Abdullah ibn Salam? Hmm? The ex-rabbi of Medina. He was the senior most rabbi of Medina when the Prophet ﷺ came. Abdullah ibn Salam. There is a report in Sunan al-Tirmidhi. You can look this up if you want. It's a very famous book, Tirmidhi. You can find this at home. And I've always encouraged you, look up the books of hadith. Don't be shy to look them up and open. What do you lose? Just they're, they're not going to bite you. Read them. Get, get connected to your tradition. Hadith number 3,617. Abdullah ibn Salam said, who said Abdullah ibn Salam? Not the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah ibn Salam said, it is written in the Torah, the description of the Prophet ﷺ. And it is written in the Torah, the description of Isa ibn Maryam. And the two of them will be buried together. Who said this? Abdullah ibn Salam. It is not a Hadith, is that clear? Where is he getting it from? His version of the Torah. It's clearly not around in our times, by the way, right? Because realize the Jewish Arabs of that time, they have a different tradition altogether. Their traditions and their calendar is different. We know this, again, I'm going to my tangents here, but anyway, <laughs> they are not connected to the mainstream Jewish diaspora that was alive at the time. They have been disconnected for a few centuries or a few decades, at least a century. And so their beliefs and their books are slightly different. And that is very interesting because then we get a window into a preserved Judaism that didn't exist in Babylon or in other places in the world or in Jerusalem uh, as well. But apparently, Abdullah ibn Salam has some books handed down generation to generation that the rest of Jewish folklore doesn't have anymore. And in it, he is saying, I am telling you that Isa and Muhammad Sallallahu are going to be buried together. One of the narrators of this hadith, the third narrator from Abdullah ibn Salam, a Taba Tabi'i, he said, and there is still a space in the hijr of the Prophet Sallallahu that can accommodate Isa ibn Maryam. Now that is a fact. That is a fact. What is a fact? That in the room of Aisha, the three bodies are this way and there is one portion that technically there is still space for one more body over there. That much is a fact. Whether it will be Isa or not, we say, what do we say? Very good. You guys are learning. Allahu A'lam. There's nothing authentic, but Abdullah ibn Salam is no joke. He is the chief rabbi, and he is saying, I'm telling you the two will be buried together. So Allah knows best. So Perhaps Isa will die a natural death and perhaps he will be buried in Medina or perhaps that is not going to uh, happen.